Hey guys, welcome to another learning session from Watch, Learn and Play channel. This time I will discuss about wire bonding process using gold wire. Gold wire bonding is one of the main interconnect process in semiconductor packaging. It is widely used because it is a proven and stable process technology. And it is really a high throughput process that is very appropriate in a high volume manufacturing environment. Wire bonding is a complex process and definitely there are lots of things to learn and can be overwhelming. So I will split the learning video into several parts so it won't be too long and boring and also not overwhelming. Okay guys, this is Lito Galera and let's start learning. Interconnect process is a process or method of connecting the die input and output terminals or what is commonly called bond pads to the terminals of the package. Wire bonding is a common interconnect method for lead frame based packages and also for BGA type packages. Another interconnect method is flip chip which is mainly for BGA packages. There are four different types of bonding wires, gold, copper, silver, and aluminum wire. Gold wire is the most popular because of its very good electrical conductivity and malleability. However, gold is very expensive. For this reason, an alternative block cost option is necessary. In early 2000, gold price skyrocketed, which expedited conversion to copper wire for many companies. Copper is a better electrical conductor than gold. However, it is harder and less malleable. Thus, it is more difficult to bond. And it is also prone to oxidation, which can be a reliability risk for a semiconductor device. With these limitations, there are some risks when converting from gold to copper wire. Therefore, not all devices can be converted. In most cases, use of copper wire is driven by cost rather than quality or reliability. Silver wire is another option for low-cost bonding. Bonding wires are not pure metal. The wires are alloyed to meet properties required for specific applications, including bondability, wire strength, and electrical conductivity. Gold, copper, and silver wires are used for ball bonding. Another popular bonding wire is aluminum. Its electrical conductivity is not as good as gold or copper, but it is a softer material and matches well with aluminum bond pad. The wire bonding method for aluminum wire is wedge bonding, and it allows use of larger wire diameter of up to 20 mils. Large wire diameter means it can carry higher electrical current, therefore it is widely used for power transistors. For this learning video, our focus shall be on ball bonding using gold wire. Let's watch again this short video of wire bonding process from TPT. You can watch the full video using the URL provided on this slide, or visit their YouTube channel tpt wirebonder I annotated the video a little bit to highlight three main steps of wire bonding which are first bond, loop formation, and second bond. Let's watch. Before we talk about the bonding process, let's discuss the first the bonding machine or wire bonder. A wire bonder is a complex, high-tech, state-of-the-art machine that has a very precise vision and three-axis motion system. The bonder is able to see and recognize tiny dye features or patterns. These patterns are used by the machine to identify precise device location and also accurately target bonding area or position. 
Unique dye features and patterns also serve as device identity and is recognizable by the machine. This machine capability is generally called Pattern Recognition System or PRS. A bonding machine has many sub-assemblies which includes material handling, optic system, bonding system, and of course a computer that controls the whole system. The diagram on this slide is a KNS automatic wire bonder. KNS stands for Colic and Sopa, which is the company that makes the machine. I highlighted four sub assemblies that mainly control the bonding process. The XY table carries the bond head and the optic system and precisely moves in XY direction. Bond head controls the said movement of the bonding process, and it includes the transducer that performs actual bonding process by applying force and ultrasonic power. Optic system is the precise eye of the machine that provides information to the pattern recognition system. Also, both XY table and bond head controls the XY and said movement to form the wire loop during bonding. Wire feed system controls wire movement and feeding to the bond head. Wire tension in the wire feed system is controlled through pneumatic controls and gauges. It's always good to see a video of actual bonding process. It looks simple but yet very complex due to the required precision of each step. So I created this simple animation so we can discuss the bonding cycle in more details. Note that the device is sitting on a heated surface or what is called the heater block. Ball bonding uses heat and ultrasonic energy, thus it is a thermosonic bonding process. Also the bonding tool is called capillary. The bonding cycle starts with prayer ball hanging on the capillary tip. I added the two images for better visualization of the capillary, pre-air ball and EFO1. The capillary then starts to descend at a controlled speed towards the bond pad with pre-air ball sitting on capillary tip. Bond force is applied at touchdown, pressing the pre-air ball onto the bond pad and ultrasonic power is applied subsequently, which completes the first bond cycle. The capillary then moves up to kink height, which is the beginning of wire loop formation. The capillary then moves forward for a reverse motion, feeding more wire for the loop formation. Capillary then moves towards the lead for the second bond cycle. After the second bond, the capillary moves up to break the wire and form another pre-air ball for the next wire. Let's see it one more time in continuous cycle. The bonded wire has three main parts. The bonded ball, which is the first bond. The wire loop and the second bond are also called stitch that looks like a fishtail. I added sample images of bonded ball and stitch for better illustration. I will discuss each part in the next slides. First bond is the bonding of pre-air ball to the bond pad. The bond pad is a small area of thin layer of aluminum. First bond requires a small amount of force to press the pre-air ball onto the bond pad, followed by ultrasonic power to form the bond between two materials. The bond is a very thin gold aluminum intermetallic layer and the strength of the bond depends on the amount of intermetallic form. The bond intermetallic is formed within the contact area between the bonded or mash ball and bond pad. The larger the mash ball, the larger the contact area and the higher percentage of intermetallic form. More intermetallic means higher bond strength, which is ideal in a bonding process. 
Let's examine the bonded ball after the first bond is complete. The bonded ball or mash ball diameter is the diameter when viewed from the top view. This diameter typically should be in the range of 2 times to 4 times of wire diameter or nominal 3 times wire diameter. For example, if you are using a 1 mil wire diameter, the target nominal diameter is 3 mils. Just to note, 1 mil is equivalent to 25 microns. Therefore, 3 mils is equivalent to 75 microns. On the mash ball diameter limit, while 4 times wire diameter may seem acceptable, it is possible that it is bigger than the bond pad opening or BPO. The mash ball diameter must be within the BPO, otherwise there is a risk of bond shorting to adjacent wire. On the low side of the limit, while 2 times wire diameter will be very likely be inside the bond pad, it is likely will result to a lower bond strength because the contact area will be smaller. Because of the inherent shape of the bonded ball, the contact area is always smaller than the mash ball diameter. Also, the bonded ball height should be around 0.6 to 0.8 times of wire diameter. The wire loop is important to clear the wire from touching any surface of the die, particularly the die edge while it forms the connection towards the lead. The wire loop must not be tight or too low to avoid unnecessary stress on the wire and prevent it from breaking. Likewise, the wire loop must not be too high otherwise it will be exposed on top of the package. On your screen are different loop profiles according to different package size or thickness. The first illustration on the top left is an example of SOP package. SOP stands for Small Outline Package. It is a thick package, task can allow a higher loop profile and still have enough clearance from top of package. The second illustration is an example of QFN type package, which is, which is a flat package. It is a thin package compared to SOP, but depending on package thickness can still allow a, a normal but slightly lower loop profile. A thinner flat package, as shown in illustration number 3, requires a, a much lower loop height and a thinner die to fit inside the package. Illustration number 4 is similar to number 3, except that the die is thicker. Notice how closer the wire to the die edge, which is almost shorting and it's not acceptable to be considered a good product. Illustration number 5 is similar to number 4, which is a thicker die, but this time the wire loop height is a bit higher. But notice how close the wire is to the top of the package. This is also not acceptable to be considered a good product. Finally, illustration number 6 fixes the issues of number 4 and number 5, while still using a thicker die. The wire loop profile is different. The top of the loop has a square shape, which allows lower loop height and at the same time, by controlling the plot length of the loop, allows more clearance between the wire and the die edge. This type of loop profile, profile is widely used in thin packages, specifically 1 mm thick or less. The second bond is the bonding of the wire onto the lead which completes the bonding sequence. Similar to first bond, bond force is applied to press the wire onto the lead and using ultrasonic power to form the bond. Because the second bond is on the lead which is a much harder material compared to aluminum bond pad, it allows a much higher bond force and ultrasonic power to make the proper bond. The bond strength is relative to contact area of the wire to the lead which is limited by the wire diameter, capillary tip size and shape, and bond pores. Let's examine the details of the completed second bond. 
one side of capillary is pressed onto the wire by the application of band pores. This forms the fishtail of the second band as shown on the image. The lead surface will also have the capillary tip impression, showing that sufficient band force was applied during bonding. Notice how the shape and size of capillary tip affect the formation of second bond fishtail. Also note that second bond is also called stitch. That concludes part 1 of wire bonding learning video. The part 2 video will be out soon and I will discuss the topics shown on your screen. To support my channel, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you for watching.